Hey. So, I was reminded of the existence of this thing, which I traded for a while ago. It's a Bluetooth keyboard adapter. It works well, has PS2 and USB, but there's uh, one caveat to it. And it's like, it's like legit hardware. It's very cool. Uh, it's like medical grade almost. It's good stuff. Uh, but it has, uh, it doesn't recognize, and that might just be this version. I don't know who that is. Hmm. I don't know if we're still recording, but whatever. So it has, what was it? Good hardware. But if you plug it into a keyboard that is uh, multiple devices, such as uh, any of the modern firmwares, when you add the mouse component to the keyboard, then it starts to not care what the keyboard does. So I had to have a, like a plain keyboard. And I didn't really have a plain keyboard, so I didn't really have anything to do with this. Uh, I did think about putting it in an AT-101, AT which I might still do if this doesn't work out, but we'll find out. Uh, but it has a uh, self-contained battery. It, you know, all the charging circuit and everything is in here. It has a button and uh, two LEDs for indicators. So I've been playing around with this lately. And I just pulled out this thing earlier, and I'm like, does this have USB? I can't remember. And it did, and I remembered the problem with it and why I put it away. And I'm like, well, now I actually have a keyboard that's just a keyboard and not a mouse. So we're going to see what we can fit in this thing. And uh, honestly, when I took it apart, I wasn't too sure not too positive how well this is going to work out. It's like uh, we've got a lot of vertical verticality going on here. Uh, the LEDs obviously we're going to re-desolder and move somewhere else. But like these ports, we're just going to have to move those. And I'm going to have to take them off. Which isn't that bad because then the, the height becomes reduced and it's only about as high as this. Uh, and this up here has the, the battery connector. That's where the battery connects. Uh, and it also sits above the USB port. So this is the charging port, I should say. And... <laughs> uh, this sits on a set of jumpers. So I might actually... I'm probably going to be able to get away with just snipping these things off and then moving them somewhere else. No, not right now, bud. Hang on. Uh, but let's see what kind of space we have in here. Do not remove. Do not remove. Oh, I removed it. I like how it says do not remove and it says okay on it. It said do not remove and I'm like, okay. Probably like this guy. So if we don't have room in here, I will probably put it on an AT-101W, which is kind of a shame, just because I don't, I like the, yeah, there I like the something that's portable, I like that idea gonna be a pain. kind of wanted to make this quick, but I don't know. Oh, actually, we gotta go soon. I'll have to probably stop this and pick it up later. Well, that's quite a set of snaps you got there, Mr. Leopold. I might have to resume this. Come on now. Good design. All right, that was not easy. Really? I'm gonna do this on the bottom now?
Again, good design. Corners, man. Yikes. <laughs> Very fine bezel. <sighs> Very nice plate, too. That actually might be a problem for Bluetooth. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we got, we definitely have some room in there. Definitely have the clearance of these standoffs. Hmm, interesting. Let's see if you can see this. Nope. There you go. That's our space to work with right in here on these stands. And I don't know if that's going to be enough. There we go. Easy. Some space in here. So this guy, at its flattest, uh, I might have to cut out some of the supports here. I think it'll fit. I'll have to take off the, yeah, to take off these connectors, obviously, and hardwire them. But yeah. Cut some relief cuts in there. Ooh, that'll actually fit by friction. Look at that. Nice. First step is going to be to take this guy apart. Oh, the battery. <laughs> this should be fine. Yes, just barely, just barely. Look at that, just barely has clearance there. Uh, but then will this fit with, oh, just barely. Look at that. <laughs> That's gonna be cool. I, I didn't think it was gonna fit, but we're, I think we're a go here. Um, Do I have the LEDs? So there's two LEDs on this. There's one on the insert and one on the caps lock. And I don't caps lock. I do insert though, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just like a status LED. Nice. So my plan was to cut the traces on it and then make it my own LED so that it would be a Bluetooth indicator and it would represent the, you know, battery charging and Bluetooth LEDs. 
And as for a button, not sure. I would like, oh, the bezel, that's right. So this bezel is, is like double shrouded. So this plastic right here, that's covering the inside here. So that covers the edge here. And then this goes over it entirely. So if I want to put a switch in it or cut something in the side, I have to cut through here and then cut the opening in that bezel piece. because the alternative is to cut through, I, I mean like run a switch through the PCB, through the plate. There's an edge here that I've got. I could run some like magnet wire through here and then just hard mount the switch somewhere. And then put something in the bezel. I don't know, I'll find out. I'm sure there's a moderately appealing switch option that will fit with this lovely classic motif. Awesome. Woo. Solid case. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad you all watched me void my warranty. <sighs> this keyboard has a story to it anyways. I don't even really think it has a warranty. Dim top res, though. You know, it's basically a rubber dome. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to figure this out a little bit more. Do some desoldering and resoldering, and uh, see what we can what we can work out.